Believe me, you will love this feature, but it hasn't been publicly released yet. So let me show you exactly how you can access the new component properties feature. So you have to utilize the browser, go to your Figma account, go to the top left corner, click on the main menu, go down to help an account, go down to account settings and under new features, you want to turn on component properties beta. And what this will give you access to is this new updated version of component properties. So let me show you exactly what it does. But before we jump straight into nested properties, let me take a step back and give you a little bit of context and maybe refresh your memory around what component properties are all about. So here we have a design and we noticed with, we reused this element twice. So we thought, let's just turn it into a component. So we made a component out of it, right? And if I go shift I and I put down tabs default, which is this component over here, you can see that I can go ahead and just change this and I might change this to passport and issued in Australia. Cool, right? And if I ever wanted to make a change to this component, I could change this gray to a blue and you will notice that it makes everything blue, right? That's the whole purpose of a component. But what component properties allowed us to do was that instead of having to change the text directly inside this component and having to double click every single time, and if we wanted to turn this Chevron off, we, we would have to double click in all the time and then turn off in here. What this allowed us to do was that if I go ahead and delete this, I can select the main component and I can double click onto the text that I want editable and I can actually go ahead and under con content, I can click this little icon over here and I can change this text to what is this text going to be about? So this might be the type of verification document and the default value might be driver's license or we might even put um, enter uh, verification, verification document, right? So that would be the default value if we create a property or done, right? And then in the subtext, it says issued in Australia. So this might change to Australia, might change to uh, the USA, it might change to India. It, it's dynamic, right? So we want it to be editable. So we might go ahead, select this text under content, select this cute little icon over here, uh, pop that down and we might create a new property, right? And this might be location, location of the verification document. And we might just say uh, issued in and we might put country, right? Or done. And then this Chevron on the right hand side, we realize sometimes we want to have it and sometimes we might want to hide it. So we can double click onto the icon and under layer, we can click on this cute little icon over here once again, and we can state this name. What is the label of this uh, component property? It would be to show and then true means it will show, right? So we can do create property. And what I can do now is shift I and then I can put down this tab once again. And you can see on the right hand side, we have some editable text. So we don't have to go in and double click on every text to change things. So here we can go type, this might be a passport and then issued in, we can change this to country, right? And we can also show and hide the icon. So that was the first iteration of component properties. Now, what we realized was once this was launched, if you wanted to change this icon, you would still have to double click to be able to change it, right? You still have to double click and nest all the way down. So what happened was just this week, Figma went ahead and launched a new update to component properties, which gives us access to all the nested elements and properties inside a main component. So here we have some of the atoms, right? That made up this a tab. So we've got the badges, we've got the chevrons, we've even got a little coin and we also got a flag as well, right? So we were just recreating and grabbing all the components that were utilized in this screen. Underneath, I've also got a new iteration of the tab, right? It's got the same thing. We've got the badge, we've got some text, we've got some text here and we also got a chevron. So what I can do now is with the updated component properties, I can actually go ahead and select this text, right? So the driver's license. And once again, I can go and change this to type and maybe I'll just leave driver's license as the default value done. I can go ahead and I've actually made a little update to the text. So I can just simply select the location and not have to change the issued in because that will always stay the same. And I can actually go ahead and change this to create a property and this might be a location and this will be set as location as default. And then I can actually go ahead and select the Chevron once again under layer. I can turn this to show, right? And we can leave this as true because as default, we want this to show. 
create property. Now what I can do now is if I go shift I and drop down a tab slash default, nothing has changed just yet, right? We still have the same sort of configurations, in other words, properties that we can change. So if we change this to Australia, you can see that it will change this to Australia. But what I can do now is if I select the main component, right, and hit plus, we see this new expose properties from nested instances. And what I can do is if I select that, I can turn on all the different properties that are nested down within this component and show it and bubble it up to the top. In other words, if I click this, click this and, and close this, you can see that the nested instances now show. And if I select this main instance, I can now, without having to double click into that main component, I can change this to passport, change this back to driver's license. I can change the uh, direction of the Chevron to all the different directions or from this interface right here. So we don't have to nest down anymore. Everything is being bubbled all the way up. Now there is one last thing that came with this update. So let's just go ahead and say, we actually want to be able to swap this icon out, right? This component out for different scenarios. So let's just say for some odd reason, we wanted to be able to swap this Chevron out with any icon like this one. So we've got an icon, a coin inside this icon component. So we can actually go ahead and double click on the Chevron and we can go ahead and click on this icon, create instant swap property, which allows you to swap instances or components inside this element. And we can go ahead and maybe just say write icon for now. And the value will be Chevron as default. Here we can also select preferred values as well. Because if you are working on a real big project, you might have all sorts of different components that will be in this list. So instead, what we can do is we can go ahead and select specific icons that we want to add to our preferred list so it doesn't clutter all the different types of icons that we want to be able to swap with. So if I, for example, just select badges, for example, it would add the badges, which then prioritizes it in the preferred values list. So if I go ahead and select create property, if I go ahead and select this uh, tab, for example, and I go ahead to the right icon, I can click on this and you would see that it just shows you the preferred ones. But that doesn't mean you can't access all the different types of components inside your project. You, if you select preferred, you can actually go to local components and you see that you can also filter through all the different types of components. Now, this is a great way if you are working on a very complex project with lots of different components, you can just simply prioritize the ones that are most relevant for this component in the project. So hopefully this gave you a very quick understanding of all the new updates that came with component properties update. Let me know in the comments below, have you already started using this update? And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to gently smash that like button. And for the diehard fans, make sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. I'll see you guys in our video very soon.